the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, September 1st, is the beginning of the Church New Year. Liturgically, our church year runs from September through August. I'm marking this, we'll have some additional prayers before the end of liturgy today. Ask that the Lord bless the coming year. Ask for forgiveness for where we've fallen short. And thanking Him for this gift, this gift of a new year. And time really is a gift, but also a limited resource. How great it is to have more time. Yet we never know how much more of it we have left in our earthly sojourn. Our Christian life is all about what I'm going to do from this moment forward. Our faith is very positive, you see, and forward-looking in this regard. Very optimistic, yet also very sober. What do we mean? That God gives us not just the gift of time, but the opportunity to change for the better, to repent. I've, I've messed up in the past, committed sins, and squandered my time. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, His Gospel, tells me that that doesn't have to be the whole story of my life. Jesus Christ offers you and me the chance to make a new beginning today. From this very moment, if I'll take it seriously. But there's also a sober understanding that even if I've been following Jesus Christ up until now, a fearful possibility remains open that, God forbid, I could turn away from Him. He gives us this freedom. And so, it's crucial to remember that the mark of a Christian is not that we've already achieved perfection or become saints, but that we're actively repenting and striving to grow in love, in faith, and in virtue. Putting off the old man and putting on Christ, growing into the stature of the fullness of Christ, in St. Paul's words. It's not that we never fall, but that a Christian is someone who rises up again after a fall. It's taking up my cross once again if I drop it, so to speak. One of the Desert Fathers was once asked, What shall I do, Abba, for I've fallen? And the old man said, Get up again. And the brother said, I got up again, but I've fallen again. And the old man said, Get up again, and again. The Christian is one who never gives up, is always ready, if need be, to make a new beginning. But think about this gift of time that we're able to make a new beginning. You know, I, I read, a, I read this, a story recently that, that struck me, where the, there was Olympic Games going on, and you know, these athletes, they, they trained for their whole, whole lives for this event. And I read about this athlete who had come from Africa, I can't recall exactly which country, but he had been training for this moment in track and field. And he had arrived at the games, ready to the preliminary rounds. And everybody's lined up, ready for the qualifying. And he heard in the distance the gun from a different event. And he stepped off, and they said, that's it, you're done, disqualified. Game over, one mistake, and you're out. Can you imagine? All, all, all of that, your whole life, you're going, you're going, we mess up once, and that's the end. Thank God our God isn't like that. <laughs> Thank God that God, that God is not, not like this. But we, we, have, we have this chance to make a new beginning if we've fallen or gotten off course. And this, of course, also takes courage and faith. So many philosophies in the world are so negative and defeatist. You can't change. Why bother, they say. Or you hear this from psychology sometimes. You can't change. Just learn to accept things. Learn to accept yourself as, as, as you are, as, as it is. But Jesus says just the opposite. He says that you can change. That repentance is possible. That you can do all things from, through my strength, not your own. Of course, we should say we shouldn't be trying to go around changing other people. That's their journey, right? But I have my journey. And Jesus says that change is positive change is possible, is indeed possible. Repentance literally means a change or transformation of the mind, a healing of our fallen mind. Jesus didn't just come to forgive us, but to heal us, right? We can think about that. If God just for forgave us and we carried all of our issues on, you know, into heaven, we'd be, still be in trouble, right? He brings us not just forgiveness, but healing. 
and gives us the chance through his grace and our labor to live as we were created to be, to have life, to have it abundantly. In the experience of countless saints and of ordinary believers, I'd say for, for, for many of you here today probably as well, as the experience of this transformation that Jesus Christ affirms is indeed possible, this positive change is possible. This is the message that Jesus declares on this ecclesiastical new year. Gospels open before us, now is the time. And we hear the words of our Lord's first public preaching in the synagogue. Opening the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, he proclaims that this is the acceptable year of our Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the oppressed, and recovery of sight to the blind. Today, Jesus tells us, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It is fulfilled today as it was fulfilled 2,000 years ago in Galilee. Healing is possible. Freedom is possible. Clarity is possible through Jesus Christ. He's come to free us from the bondage of sin and death. To follow Jesus, as we said, it takes great courage and a daily decision to take up our cross. As he says in, in St. Luke's Gospel, in ourselves, to take up our cross daily, daily, and follow me. We're given an example of, the, of this in God's word to Joshua, the son of Nun in the Old Testament, who the church, by the way, not by coincidence, commemorates today. Joshua, if you recall, was Moses' closest disciple and helper during the time of the exodus from Egypt. And he himself prefigured Jesus Christ in several important ways, this connection being very clear in the Hebrew language, because the names of Jesus and Joshua are the same in Hebrew, Yeshua, but give my pronunciation there. But Moses, we had been read in the exodus, had led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, just as the law of Moses freed people from the slavery of idolatry, it, it taught the people uh, to not to worship false gods, but to know the true God, to discern right and wrong. So it has this, the, it has this role of, of leading, leading us out of, out, of, uh, out of false belief, discerning right and wrong, but it's not enough. Neither Moses nor the law were not to lead us, lead the people into the promised land. It wasn't Moses who would take them all the way, but Joshua, prefiguring Jesus Christ, who fulfills the expectations and hopes of the Old Testament, and leads us into the true promised land of the kingdom of heaven. This event today we look at, just, just as Joshua was about to cross the Jordan River with the people into the land of Canaan, the Lord tells him three times to be, be strong and be of good courage. The Lord tells him, be strong and be of cur good courage. Enter the land and keep the commandments. Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And God tells us this today too. Be strong and be of good courage. Don't be afraid of temptations or the challenges you'll face. Don't be dismayed if you trip up at times or face setbacks. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Are we poor in spirit, broken hearted, feeling oppressed by sin or our own weakness? Then be strong and be of good courage, says the Lord. For today Jesus has come to set us free. Today as this word is fulfilled in our hearing, Jesus has come to show us the way. Thank God for this gift of time. Thank God for second and third and fourth chances. Deep down, I think we all know what needs to change in our life. And this is something I recommend all of us to, to reflect on uh, today. To identify one thing that we need to change in our life. One thing I need to repent of or to work on to strengthen my faith. Or one thing to live in a more Christ-like way. And if you're not sure, because this may not be immediate at this moment, but there is a very simple way to find out. Before bed tonight, stand in prayer before God and ask Him to show you one thing to change in your life. I simply say, Lord, show me the one thing to work on, one thing to change in my life. Quiet your thoughts and wait for that answer in your heart. And if it doesn't come right away, it may not immediately, but I'm pretty sure it will tomorrow, because God has given us a conscience. 
and his way of speaking to us through our conscience that lets us, that can let us know these things. It won't keep silent. Uh, he will speak to us if we listen. But here's where it takes courage, right? Because I probably won't like what I'm going to hear. It may not seem easy at all, but may the Lord give us the strength to receive his word, to make the sign of the cross and say, may it be blessed. And so on this church new year, let's resolve to not put off living our Christian life, not put off making the changes I need, know I need to make in my life, but in the words of our Holy Father, Herman of Alaska, to resolve from this day, from this moment, from this very hour, to love God above all and strive to keep His holy will. To Him it be all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.